Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Take a moment, grab a cup of coffee, and then we're gonna dive right in. Here we are again, ready to trade the number at the end of the year and transition from 2019 to 2020. And maybe you're excited and ready to embrace everything the new year holds, but maybe 2019 was just a little bit rough. And you're limping by, disappointed and battered, just surviving until you make it to the next year, trying to figure out how you can let go of the past. I don't know what you've been through, the pain or the heartache that you've experienced, but God does. He's seen every tear wept into your pillow. He knows every disappointment, every lost dream, every burden on your heart. New Year's for many is a time to look back, to reminisce over the last 12 months and see just how far we've come. It's a time to let go of the past and embrace the future. Maybe this year didn't go to how you planned. You found yourself dealing with a diagnosis you weren't expecting or reeling from an accident you never saw coming. Suddenly you found yourself dealing with pain and your well-laid plans swirling the drain. You were so on top of it when you, the year started and then you found you couldn't keep up. And now you don't even have a chance of catching up. I find myself thinking of Exodus 14 as the people cross the Red Sea. No, we may not have experienced what the Israelites went through, but in our own little way, we can all relate to their story, to their storm. We can relate to the exhaustion. We can relate to the fear of the unknown. And we can relate to their resilience. Don't believe me? Look at you. You're here. You're still standing. You're still walking. Sure, you may have a few dents. A few scratches that weren't there before, but you're here. Now, learning to let go of the past is not going to be easy, but you've made it this far. You see, resolutions are cheap. We can break them almost as soon as we make them, but resilience? That's priceless. That's what keeps us trudging after God when everything in us wants to give up. It keeps you clinging to God when you're walking through the fire. Resilience is forged in the storm. When your choices are to give up or to keep moving, you, my friend, are resilient. Often once we are out of the storm, we just want to keep going. But when you do that, you miss what God was doing in the storm. Turn around. Look and see what God did in your life over the last year. Find his fingerprints. Find the pillars of fire and cloud, trace back over the year and find where God met you right where you are. Where he drew you away from something because he had something better for you. Letting go of the past so God can redeem means finding the moments and letting him wash away everything else. If we back up in the story to Egypt, the thing they are fleeing from had been the escape before, but now it's the thing that's enslaving them. They were forced to do a job that they didn't have the resources or the supplies to do. And what had been a good thing when they came was now threatening to overwhelm them until God moved and sent Moses to convince Pharaoh to set them free. Maybe our situations don't look like that. But how many times this year did you feel like you didn't have what it took to get the job done? Didn't have what it took to raise those kids? Didn't have what it took to keep all the balls that you're juggling in the air? How many times did your escape turn into the thing that was enslaving you? The Bible tells us that Pharaoh didn't want to let the Israelites go because they were valuable. And so here they are with their backs against the Red Sea, and the full might of Pharaoh's army before them. And they begin to cry out. Isn't it ironic that when we are hard pressed, when the storms bear down on us, and all we see is the water, that we forget the promises God's made to us. 
We start wallowing in the past in old habits and patterns instead of trusting the God that God's got this. I love God's response to the Israelites in Exodus 14, 15. Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. That's the NIV version. You're not going to see the purpose until you are on the other side of the season. So keep walking. Keep pushing forward. Keep clinging to God. Keep reading your Bible. Keep feeding your soul. Keep worshiping and praising God even when you don't see the answer. Keep praising him for the breakthrough even when you haven't seen it yet. God's already promised to see you through. He's brought you out and saved you for a purpose. The proof that you belong to God isn't that you never faced a storm, but that you went through and you're still standing, that he's still seeing you through. What you see as an inconvenience or a trial may be the very thing God wants to use to be a lighthouse in someone else's storm. Our perspectives are so limited, but what happens when we step back and look at the big picture? Where did God save us? What did he set us free from? We aren't just saved from our sins. We are saved for a purpose. You and I, we have a purpose, a mission. God didn't bring us to this point with our backs against the water to leave us here. See, God knew we would be here before we ever entered this year. What looks like a trap to your enemies, because the Lord is with you, becomes a path. The Bible says that the Israelites crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. Think about that for a moment. It says dry ground. Not muddy, not sort of wet, dry. God potted the waters with a strong east wind all that night and allowed them to walk across the sea floor, a place no man had walked before, on dry ground. Have you ever been to a lake when the water was down and tried to walk through the revealed ground only to find it muddy? And yet, this ground is dry. This wasn't a spur-of-the-moment decision on God's part. He already knew they were going to be here and provided for their needs. They're walking through a perilous situation. The water could collapse and drown them in an instant. The might of the entire Egyptian army is behind them, ready to destroy them. The unknown before, and all they can do is keep walking. As they begin to cross over to the other side of the sea, the Egyptians begin chasing them. Can you even imagine? Just as they thought they were free, that they had gotten away, and they look back and see the Egyptians are following them. Sound familiar? Just when you thought you were free, that old habit raises its head again. Or that old self that you thought you dealt with pops back up. But for the Israelites, this is a setup. To the Egyptians, this looks like the perfect trap because the Israelites are against the sea. But what they don't realize was this was a trap for them and a set it for God to reveal his power. He needed to show the Egyptians who he was, but he, God also needed to show his people who he was. This moment is the climax of all the suffering they've been through, ready to pour over like a tidal wave and not just impact their lives, but the whole land for generations. This moment that feels so dark and hopeless isn't even about them. And maybe that's the truth about this year. It wasn't about us. Those dreams we had to leave behind, the dark place we went through, the pain and the struggles as you fought the same tired battles over and over again. Maybe they weren't about us, but God needed to use our lives to proclaim his power and glory. Maybe it's not about what God gave us, but what he's going to do through us. It's okay to be disappointed, but do not let that become the rod that you measure this year with. Let go of the past. Don't focus on what you've been through, but what God did through what you went through. The truth is both God and the devil want to use what you've been through this year. You have to decide who gets to use it. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, 
causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love him. To those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Romans 8, 28. Whatever this new year holds, step into it with all the lessons you've learned from the old year. Let go of the past and bring with you the blessings and the memories of where God saw you through. much for watching. I'm so glad you were here with me today. Take a moment, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon if you want to see more of our videos, and make sure you like this video. Have a great week, and we'll see you again here next week.